In this tutorial, I will show you all the steps to create an animation in Blender that resembles GoPro or any other action camera footage like this one. I will be using the latest version of Blender, as well the version 3.0, because we need to use a free add-on that hasn't been updated since then. I will also use a free Android app to control the camera movement with our device. Please note that your device must support AR Core technology. You will find all links and instructions to install in the description. I will also leave a link for an alternative app for iOS users. Finally, I will use the free version of DaVinci Resolve for post-production. As usual, all the tools and assets I use to create this animation are free, so everyone can follow along. Let's begin! Usually, modeling will be the first step followed by texturing, but for this particular scene I will group them into one step because all of these models are photo scans ready to use that I downloaded from Quixel. All you need to do is to place them in a coherent way. Why do photo scans work so well? Well, because of the imperfections. Both model and textures have lots of tiny imperfections. This is the number one feature that makes things look natural to our perception. While I created this scene using photoscans, this doesn't mean that you cannot create hyper-realistic animations with your own models and textures. Just remember to work on the imperfections. For the greenery, I'm using the geometry node that I show you how to create in another tutorial. Next step is the lighting. This step can get as complex as you want. Lighting scenes is an art in itself, but for the sake of showing how simple it is to achieve scenes like this, this is my entire lighting setup. It is a simple overcast sky that I downloaded from Polyhaven, with the strength set to the default value of 1. I'm controlling the exposure value from here, as you will do with a real camera. Next step is the camera. The camera has three important aspects in an animation. First, the aspect radio and lens. This is a default camera. I'm using the 16.9 default aspect radio, which is the same that this camera uses. We have to set up this kind of rounded image that you get when using the GoPro at the widest angle by changing the panoramic settings and then the lens value to something like 16 mm. I decided on these values by holding my own GoPro and observing the curvature, but you could do this by checking the official sensor and lens size. The second aspect of natural looking camera footage is the camera movement. We need to make this camera movement look handheld. So for that purpose I will show you how to use the free app for Android and the add-on to connect your device to Blender 3.0. But before that, I need to show you how to export from Blender 4 to 3 without crashing Blender. This is my scene. What I want to do is simplify the scene to work faster, as the only thing I need to do in Blender 3 is create a camera movement. So I will use the decimate modifier to reduce the number of polygons. Also, you may want to export only a few objects, the ones that will help you to orient yourself. Export this has an FBX using the default export values. This is the scene in Blender 3. The only thing you need to do is to import the FBX. Now we are ready for the handheld effect. Let me show you in a default scene how this works. Install and enable this add-on, and also install the Android app on your device. The first thing you want to do is to connect Blender with your device. So go here and press Start. It will give you an IP address and a QR code as well. If you receive a bunch of errors at this step, you just need to choose a different port. This is how the app looks when you open it. You need to point to the QR and you will be connected. If for some reason it doesn't work, press the blue icon at the bottom of the screen and you can type the IP and the port provided by the add-on. The bottom icon will turn green, which means you are now connected. Point it to a well-lit portion of the floor and a grid will start to build. Then you must press somewhere on the screen and your scene will appear. Besides movement, there are two more gestures controls for the app. When you press the screen, this means that the origin of the Blender scene will be placed right there. So if you have your origin of the scene in the corner of your model and then you press the screen pointing at the corner of your room, 
you will sink both corners. I hope this makes sense. The second one is using both your fingers with a typical gesture for zooming in and out, which will actually escape the model. So after you set up the position of the scene, you will want to scale it so one meter of movement inside Blender is one meter of real movement in your room. On the app screen, you will also find a blue camera icon, which when pressed will turn green, and as long as you have a camera in Blender, it will start updating the camera's position in real time. Then you will press the play button, which will start recalling the movement of the camera. The number of frames will depend on your settings inside Blender. Keep in mind that the recording function sometimes won't work anymore, so you will have to restart the app and reconnect. Also, sometimes the camera inside Blender will start shaking like crazy, so you need a lot of patience to create this. Finally, you have the grey refresh icon, which will update the model if you make any modifications to the Blender file. Once you have the camera animation, you simply save it as a Blender file and append it into your original Blender 4 file. Finally, for this camera movement, I activated the motion blur. The default value will add a slight motion blur when the camera moves faster. Our third and final step for the camera setup will be the auto exposure animation. To make this effect, you need to go here and also open the timeline. I will move to this frame and hit I to create a new keyframe. Let's say I want to decrease the exposure value here, as if the camera just detected a lot of light in the frame and it will lower the exposure compensation. This frame that I created here will freeze the value on all previous frames until this point. Then I will move forward one frame and hit I again. This will be my initial value, which will be equal to the previous value. Then I will move 24 frames, which is one second of time because this is how I set up my frame rate. One second is the time it will take my camera to fix the exposure compensation from 8 to 6. So I will type 6 here and then hit I to set that value. And that's it. Now the value will automatically decrease. If you want to change the way this interpolation works, you can go to the curve editor and adjust these curves. You can make the changes more drastic by creating steps curves or just make it linear. For me, the default curves work just fine. Our last step will be rendering the animation and post-processing with DaVinci Resolve. First, let's look at the configuration of cycles. I'm using the GPU because it's much faster, but with the CPU you will get the same render. I will lower the noise threshold to half of the default value and then reduce the max samples. Let me explain how this works. Cycles will render each part of the image until the noise threshold is reached or until the max samples value is reached. If it reaches the noise threshold before the max samples, the render will be done. So, if you set up 4000 samples but your noise threshold is still the default, you won't have a better quality image. That's why the noise threshold is a fundamental part of the quality of the images in cycles. Tweaking the noise threshold is particularly important for animations because they always have some noise flicker. So you will want to reduce the noise as much as you can as long as the render doesn't take ages. I also find that increasing the resolution to double is very helpful in reducing the noise flickering. This will work as long as we then reduce the 4K size in post-processing to 2K again. I will use a frame rate of 24 and make sure to select a folder in which you will save your animation. I will save it as JPEG format and render the animation. Once it's done, we open the free version of DaVinci Resolve, which will look like this. Double click on Untitled Project and this will be your main screen. The first thing you want to do here is to check if you have Show Page Navigation enabled. This is our page navigation. In the wheel, you have the project settings. The default settings are okay with me, so I won't change anything, but it is good to know where to find this. So we are going to click on edit, and once there, we are going to drag and drop the folder with the JPEG images into the timeline. This will automatically create a sequence and also automatically scale the 4K images to the 2K project size. If your playback is lagging, you can go here and reduce the scale of the playback. 
Let's go to color. You can find the effects here and then you have a lot of different curves here. I will remove the black pixel of the image by creating this curve and also I will add some saturation because GoPro footage visually looks oversaturated. I will search for the glow effect, drag it here and connect it. The blend value is the overall value of the effect. I will reduce it until it increases the spread of the glow. You can easily turn the effect on and off here to see the before and after. For this tutorial I will keep it simple, so I won't add any other color corrections or effects. Let's go back to edit and drop some sound effects for more immersion. I just quickly created these sounds with a recorder on my phone. One is bird sounds, the second is breathing and the third one is the wood cracking sound. Place them all together. You can reduce the size of these things with the scroll and shift key. Now select the video clip and you can move to the beginning and end of it with the up and down keys. Go to the end of the clip and hit O, which is the shortcut for range out. This will mark the end of the video. Now let's go to the lever and make sure you have in out range selected here. Choose the YouTube preset here and then add it to the render queue. All you have to do now is press Render All and your animation is complete. Please let me know your thoughts and any questions you may have. And if you enjoyed the tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe since I will be uploading a lot more content like this. Thanks for watching.